tornadoes, hail, wind, and flooding. The big risks, but not the only ones we face here in North Texas in the spring. Because of our location on the map, this is the time of the year we see some of the worst severe weather anywhere in the country. We are your Texas weather experts, and we're here to help you survive spring storms in North Texas. Hi, I'm Chief Meteorologist Scott Padgett, along with Meteorologist Annalise Parks, Jeff Jamison, and Jeff Frey. And in the next 30 minutes, we're going to help you prepare for all of the spring weather risks here in North Texas. With weather that can threaten your life and your property, we'll help you learn how to protect yourself. That includes the best places to go in your home and the options you have that might make you even safer in a storm. What you should do if you're caught outdoors and what to know about new outdoor warning technology that could alert you before you're ever in danger. And new research underway right now to make weather forecasts and warnings even better than they already are. North Texas usually sees the most violent and damaging severe weather in the spring, but severe weather can and does occur every month of the year. Tornadoes always get the most attention, but flooding is the single most deadly weather hazard, and hail is the most costly. Sometimes one storm can cause an excess of a billion dollars in damage. Lightning is a hazard with every storm. 20 people struck by lightning in the U.S. last year died. Only four months into the year, and North Texas has already seen several rounds of dangerous weather. That includes three tornadoes so far. One in Mesquite last month tore part of the roof off of this home. A few days later, a tornado caused damage near Mineral Wells. Another caused damage in northwest Parker County. But it doesn't take a tornado to cause significant damage. Wind from the same storm system brought these under construction townhomes collapsing. No one was hurt. But it shows the power of the wind. And then there's hail. Several cities in Denton and Collin County saw destructive hail up to the size of grapefruits. In this storm alone, the Insurance Council of Texas estimates between three and four hundred million dollars in damage. Nothing is more important for your safety than knowing what to do and where to go in bad weather. There are three rules of thumb to always remember. One is to find a sturdy, permanent, well-built building. Two, go underground if possible, and if not, get as low as you can, preferably on the first or ground floor. Three, get in an interior room with as many walls between you and the outside as you can. That gives you the most protection from destructive wind and flying debris. Protecting life and property, two key principles the National Weather Service takes so seriously that those words are part of the agency's mission statement. And it's a mission they carry out around the clock every day of the year. Deep in the heart of Tornado Alley is the National Weather Center, a state-of-the-art building housing organizations like NOAA, the National Severe Storms Laboratory, and the Storm Prediction Center. The SBC has a team of 32 meteorologists analyzing the latest weather patterns and data 24-7 to see where and when a threat of severe weather exists in the United States, a mission they don't take lightly. You have an organization that's part of the federal government that are world-renowned experts that, are, that spend all day, every day, looking at severe thunderstorms, tornadoes, fires to become the best that they can at identifying and forecasting. The SPC works closely with the National Weather Service and meteorologists like us to get the word out about the threat of severe storms days in advance. Detailed forecasts that have increased in accuracy in the past five to ten years thanks to the latest storm research. Here in the National Severe Storms Lab, or NSSL, computers crunch the latest numbers in hopes of moving severe storm forecasting forward. One of those experimental programs is the Warn On Forecast. It's a probabilistic forecast system, and we're just working to extend lead times for tornadoes and other severe hazardous weather like hail and wind. A tornado watch or severe weather watch can be issued anywhere from 6 to 36 hours in advance. When a warning is issued, it can be only 15 minutes before the storm reaches your town, which isn't a lot of lead time. Researchers want to bridge that gap between watch and warning. They want to use new technology to give you more detailed information than what currently comes from a watch, but more time to prepare when a warning doesn't give you enough time to even prepare for a storm. This is what we know. This is what's happening, and now you can make your decisions based on that. Decisions that are a team effort between the local National Weather Service and community emergency managers. Right now, severe thunderstorm warnings and tornado warnings cover large areas, and while effective, many meteorologists feel it isn't enough. So, will there ever be a day where meteorologists can forecast a tornado hitting a certain point at a certain time, hours in advance? 
I hope so, but it's it's something that we're working towards and something that all of our, our research is kind of going to. So we didn't think that we would have graphics that say a tornado warning is likely for this specific area a few hours out, and we, we did that. So I'm very hopeful that we can continue to do that in, in more situations. Our CBS 11 storm trackers are the eyes and ears for all of us during severe weather back here in the studio. When a tornado slammed into Canton in 2017, one of our storm chasers was right there with it. First warning about the danger, but then finding himself in a different role. This is seconds after the tornado passed in front of me, and just I remember pulling in there and just hearing people screaming and just destruction everywhere, as you can see. The camera in CBS 11 storm chaser Jason McLaughlin's car was rolling April 29, 2017. First, when this destructive EF4 tornado passed just a few hundred feet in front of him on I-20, then when it tore into a car dealership along the highway. Oh God! Holy! Oh. I remember going through vehicles that were stacked up out on the interstate um, and stacked up out in the ditches. And I just remember talking with you and talking with Jeff Ray at the time and just thinking there's, there's no way if someone's here that they survived this. Jason was in constant communication with all of us in the CBS 11 Weather Center. But what he saw got to a point where he knew he had to do something more. I just remember immediately the emotional kind of breakdown I had just right afterwards pulling in. You being there, one of the first responders, so sometimes it just turns into that having to right. then provide help. Because we want to provide help by warning people ahead of the storm, but then when you're there, you have to provide help afterwards. Absolutely. And like I said, that's a, that's a thing of it. You know, we, we always stop and we're out there. When we see damage, we stop. That's the end of the chasing. Large stovepipe violent tornado is on the ground. Sometimes even the weather can surprise experienced chasers like Jason. He's had to replace more than one windshield in his 18 years of storm chasing. Really just two, and uh, those weren't just windshields. They were all the windows at the time. Uh, Jason's advice, if you're ever caught in something like this. My thing that I tell people, if you can't see what's happening, then you don't need to be out there to see what's happening. Go inside, find somewhere safe to be. Hiding underneath a highway overpass is never a good option. Wind speed increases with height. And on top of that, the bridge funnels the wind right where you're seeking shelter, making it even stronger and even more dangerous. It's a much better idea to find a nearby sturdy structure, get out of your vehicle, and seek shelter there. Coming up, it's one of the newest warning devices designed just to tell you to seek shelter. What it does, how the warning works, and what you need to know to protect yourself.